coming to the New Testament, in the King James Version, in some modern translations, they have omitted these words which I'm going to say now. But in the King James Version, which Brother Swaggart uses, so he advertises this book here, King James Version. And in the King James Version, the New Testament starts. First book, the first book is the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Second book, the Gospel according to St. Mark. Third book, the Gospel according to St. Luke. Fourth book, the Gospel according to St. John. I'm asking, what is this according to? According to, according to. Why according to? You, see, you don't get the joke. You just read the Gospel according to Matthew, Matthew, according to Mark, according to Luke, according to John. I said, what is this according? Why according to? This little publication, it says there, Ahmad that. That's my book. I wrote it. I'm responsible. You can take me to task. If I have made some utterances here which are false, you can take me to task. Because this is my book. But if it was according to Ahmad Didat, that means somebody else wrote it. Not me. You are telling that according, maybe it's not, it was not according to what I'm thinking. But you're attributing things to me. It could be a lie against me. But if I wrote it, I'm responsible. But if somebody attributes something to me, say, according to Mr. Didat, it could be false. So every book begins according to, according to, according to, because Matthew didn't sign his name, Mark didn't sign his name, Luke didn't sign his name, John didn't sign his name. These are not, these are anonymous books. Somebody had written. And they just say, well, I think this Matthew could have. You know, I think this is the work of Mark. I think, you know, it's just, it seems to fit, uh, fit Luke's mentality. I think you know, only John could have spoken like that. So according, according. The internal evidence also shows, like for example, that Matthew didn't write Matthew. Matthew, chapter 9, verse 9. It says, while he, that is Jesus, was going forth into the way, he, Jesus, saw a tax collector called Matthew. And he, Jesus, came up to him, Matthew, and said unto him, Matthew, follow me, Jesus, and he, Matthew, followed him, Jesus. I'm asking, did Jesus write that? Did Matthew write that? If Matthew wrote it, he said, while he was going forth into the way, he saw me collecting taxes at the tax collector's table. And he came up to me and said unto me, follow me, and I followed him. That's Matthew talking. But this is somebody writing in the third person. See, not the words of Jesus, not the words of Matthew. And one of the leading lights of the Christian world, J.B. Phillips, an Anglican, a pre day of the Chichester Cathedral in England. He translated the Gospels, the New Testament, into modern English. See, most of this English here is archaic, you know, old-fashioned. Thee and thou and thine. So he brought it down to this ordinary, usual level, colloquial level. The Gospels into modern English. And in his preface to the Gospel, he says, Early tradition ascribed this Gospel to the Apostle Matthew. That's what people said, that Matthew wrote the book. But scholars nowadays almost all reject the view. Who scholars? Muslim scholars? Jewish scholars? Hindu scholars? No, Christian scholars. Christian scholars of the highest eminence. They say that Matthew didn't write Matthew. Say the author, whom we may still conveniently call Matthew. Conveniently. Because instead of saying the first book of the New Testament, chapter 9, verse 9, the first book of the New Testament, chapter 5, verse 17, wasting my breath, wasting time in writing, wasting space, ink. He says, no. So I said, Matthew 9, 9. I said, Matthew 5, 17. Conveniently, I'm using the name, the term. He said, the author, whom we may still conveniently call Matthew, has plainly drawn on the mysterious Q. Now this Q is in inverted commas. It stands for the German word quella, means sources, some mysterious sources, which might have been a collection of oral traditions. He has used Mark's gospel freely. This man, who's supposed to be Matthew, has used Mark's gospel freely. In the language of the school teacher, he has been copying wholesale from Mark. In the language of the school teacher, he's copying wholesale from Mark. And Mark was a 10-year-old boy when Jesus walked this earth. 
Can you imagine an eyewitness, a your witness, a companion of Jesus? He goes and copies a 10 year old boy who wasn't there. Does it make sense to you? If it was Matthew, would you go and copy somebody else and a child of 10? So therefore we know, not only that it is not the word of God, but it is not even the words of Matthew.